with a comfort pick, and it's worked out so far here at the World Championships. Palkia V-Star is a deck that players knew was strong, and after it saw so much play across so many different competitive events all at once, the list has been dialed into a devastating monstrosity. And now at the top eight here, top four, the players have now realized in order to take this deck down, I can't play soft. I can't say I have a good matchup into Palkia. I have to grind it down and crush it into the dust. We've got the flying Pikachu VMAX to exploit that lightning weakness. We've got the memory capsule Jolteon to shut off the shady dealings. Wow, that's a big two prize cards prized both copies of flying Pikachu VMAX. That is going to be possibly detrimental here for Daichi. When we look at this matchup, we know that the prize cards are the key to even opening up a window of opportunity for Palkia. And if you give them the time to set up, make use of the Shady Dealings and the Radiant Greninja for just a couple turns, they can run away with the game. Daichi opening us up with the classic Arceus V setup and now with a quick ball. Yeah, this is an excellent hand. Unfortunately, going to get the news that Flying Pikachu is not an option, but sometimes you don't even need Flying Pikachu. The most important part of this matchup specifically is setting up Jolteon, and Daichi has the turn one EV, and this is what you want going first. It means that the option is there to get out. The Thunderous Awakening ability with the Jolteon and the Memory Capsule has the attachment for turn to apply pressure. The Greninja's in the active spot. That's a more than happy target. You're looking good here if you're Daichi off the start of the bat. Nothing that screams, oh, I can't do what my deck wants to do. There's plenty of options. Precisely. This deck counters Palkia in so many different ways from so many different angles that even if one piece of that is missing, you still have a way to lock them down. Memory Capsule, Marnie Path. Daichi's still going to be pretty uh, comfortable here from this position after getting the you know view at the deck, knows what the situation is, wow. has the EV on the bench with the turn one attachment. Without the rest of the pieces, this is still a pretty strong setup. We're threatening the evolution into the Trinity Nova next turn. James, meanwhile, going to respond with a quick ball on uh, to get rid of the quick shooting in Teleon. Radiant Greninja stranded in the active, but we need a little bit more of our supporting cast, Ethan. Yeah, so usually you want to utilize concealed cards before searching your deck out with Quick Ball to grab more Pokemon. Mm. But in this case, it makes sense because James doesn't have a supporter card like Melanie or Irida to play on this first turn. So understands that, hey, I really want to draw into those cards instead of another copy of Sobble because there's a chance my entire Intellion engine turns off. So smart play from James, understanding that this is an exception to usually the basic sequencing with Greninja 101 rules. I wish there was a handbook that would be useful for a lot of players. I know that we want to learn from these players, and that's why we're here. You can see that for every rule, there is an exception, and I think the world broadcast has showcased almost every single oddball edge case of bad draws, bad prizes, mm. decks popping off turn one, and now with James having no access to that supporter, as you said, Ethan, is not going to get that explosive start. Yep, is able to still get the Sobble out into play. It's very solid. You're, you have to bank off the fact that your uh, your opponent does not put this into play. And this EV we haven't actually talked about. This is different from the EV we usually see with V-Surge. It has a pretty powerful ability that when you evolve the EV into a Jolteon, you can search your deck for the same type of evolution to evolve another ah. one of your EVs. It's very strong in this match specifically. Daichi is playing it for this sole reason, is to avoid those Greninja plays. You can evolve two Jolteon and put two Jolteon into play a single turn. And wow, concealed cards into no copies of Battle VIP Pass. This is a similar list that we saw Kai to oh, Kaiwen no. played. And look at that right off the bat. Such a strong hand can afford to discard Marnie and an energy to grab Arceus V-Star. Wow, things are unfolding excellently here for Daichi. And now if Daichi so chooses, we have that star birth. Just find Jolteon and Memory Capsule. Just go all in on getting the setup and completely shutting James down. The window to get those key pieces set up with the Palkia, the turn one attachment, etc., is the only means you have to stay in this game before you are shut down. It's so cutthroat with this list where it just bullies you out of the game. Game. Marnie now shutting down, put those cards right back on the bottom of the deck. 
Yeah, just need to find one of a couple pieces here to get this lock, and it's there. It's 100% the there. Has the energy in hand, so can grab something like the Jolteon and Memory Capsule. Has Ultra Ball as well, and this is looking yep. excellent. The turn to Trinity Nova, Jolteon lock with the Pikachu up. Excellent start from Daichi. Has everything he could want in this position. Has the Star Birth in the perfect position to solidify an advantage. This is not a comeback card. I'm not trying to find a missing piece or a clutch thing when I have my back against the wall. I'm just going to lock you down immediately here on turn two. Wow, and James did not have a strong enough start to really Another out Ultra a lot of Ball. these cards. Yep. Yeah, has Ultra Ball though, and yeah, this can just alone grab something even like a Pokemon such as Jolteon. Gets the Jolteon. There it is. Gets the second Eevee like you were talking about, Ethan. That way you have that split threat. Yep, you need to get the Eevee down as well to evolve it, but listen, with how things have worked out right now, if it's just one Jolteon, that's good enough for the way things are going to be. Mm -hmm. There, it, there is. it is. Jolteon. Jolteon, that beautiful gold memory capsule. The energy attachment for and turn. An easy knockout, just getting ah. one more prize. Flying Pikachu there at the bottom of the prizes. That's going to come up as well as a pretty strong attacker here in the next couple turns. And what can James do? You see the look of defeat. Hand on yep. the head. Has no clue what, what to do in this position. Your opponent has now flooded the board with energy. Has a lightning attacker that your entire deck folds to the top deck for a turn is at least a Melanie, so that can draw some more cards, but it just, it's so crazy to say it, but Daichi has almost wrapped the game up on the second turn of the game. We saw this in the previous set, however, where game one went very easy for this Arceus deck, and then in turn two, it was just a half step behind, and that's all it took for Palkia to come bursting onto the scene. James might be able to just concede here pretty quickly if nothing can happen on this turn and go into the second game and take one more shot at getting that battle VIP pass classic explosive Palkia V-Star turn one that this list has really become known for. Yeah, but there's there's no way to use Star Portal. We do see the Crabominable come down. Okay, I like seeing Crabominable come down. Again, it's not a lightning weak water type Pokemon, but it's gonna take a while to power up. You can utilize Melanie onto it, but the Destroyer Punch attack, it can do 90 plus 60, which to most people, how are you gonna get damage counters on? James is running Galarian Zigzagoon, but you're gonna need to utilize Headbutt Tantrum a lot. That Zigzagoon's gonna have to put a lot of work. <laughs> it might get a little tired with how much headbutting it's doing. It is there in the hand, so now we just need some scoop up nets. And we need a little bit of luck and a very, very powerful dream. Melanie also making her appearance here, having to accelerate the energies as quick as you can without access to the star portal like a barbarian, one energy at a time. Yeah, James has identified a really nice route here, probably the best route that I could have picked in this matchup. And it's going in with this non-lightning weak attacker, but the problem with this is you're not consistent to try to power this up. Mm -hmm. Luckily found the Melony by chance off the Marnie, but there's nothing else. There's a boss's and, orders. Wow, that's yeah. a huge boss's orders. Can just swing into this. It's not enough to take the knockout, but it at least puts pressure on, and the most this can do is just trade, and then from there, there's no board presence whatsoever on James's side. Yeah, and we saw the, the Zigzagoon puts the one ping on the Jolteon, trying to take this thing down, trying to turn off that Thunderous Awakening. Maybe there is a way to just open up this game once we get the rest of these abilities online. Irida is going to be the supporter for turn. James going in, can get one water Pokemon, and the Cross Switcher is already getting it lined up here to switch up that Jolteon and open up the rest of what this deck is capable of. Yeah, the problem though is there's no way to take the knockout onto Jolteon this turn, no way to remove tools. Mm -hmm. uh, you can mm -hmm. play the tool jammer and bring it up, but it unfortunately will not remove it because the way that the Thunderous Awakening ability reads is as long as this Pokemon has a memory capsule attached to it. Even though you're shutting off the effective memory capsule, it will still work out. So the Zigzagoon will come up, the Jolteon's gonna get put in the active to try to stall a turn, but unfortunate there. Capture Energy is a top deck. That is easily a way to retreat this Jolteon. It's a pretty quick Pokemon. It should be as a, as a Lightning Evolution. So the Capture Energy can also grab the Pokemon out of the deck to thin out. But nope, we're just going to see that get played. Doesn't even need it. Nope, doesn't even need it. It has a research for the following turn, too, if it's yep. needed again. And so Daichi just really enjoying a favorable position here in the first game. In a best of three, you love to get this early advantage, this early tempo. Here's the professor's research already set up and ready to go. I love that art, by the way. 
and now seven more cards off the top. Every time we see the Professor's Research come through, it always has a treasure trove of options for Arceus. Yeah, really looking for boss's orders. That's the card to target down. The only Pokemon that is a threat over on James' side, and it's that Kerbomidable. Retreating, of yep. course, going to take the knockout. Another knockout, and that's going energies. to be the Flying Pikachu also coming into the hand from the bottom of the prize. Yeah, and, and, and James is just going to scoop yep. things up. There's no way to win this. Daichi's going to go up 1-0 to start things out. Everything went perfectly, and as we've explained, if this deck is able to just do what it wants to do, it does not matter how James sets up 95 out of 100 times because you just your deck can't function, no matter how well you play it. We saw one of those five games happen in the previous set, and we need two more of them to somehow fall into plays back to back here for James Cox to take down this very, very lopsided matchup. But if anybody's going to do it, it's certainly going to be a world's caliber player here with their back against the wall. Yeah, mental is something to note as well going into this game. You've got two opposite sides. Both can be an advantage and both can be a disadvantage. On James' side, you're definitely feeling defeated after that first game. You need to get your head back in. If you start to spiral out of control, start to lose hope and say, you know what, top four was good enough anyways. I'm going to walk away with just the top four. Mm -hmm. you're, lost. you're lost. You're not coming back in this game. There's no way you can stay focused. And if you're Daichi, you can get into this position and say, I've won, I've got this, I'm good. But if something happens, if, if, you're, stay, if you stray away from yep. focus on the match, you can lose it all. You can, it's, it can happen that quickly. It can happen in an instant. Yeah, you can find a prize penalty somehow. We've seen players enjoy advantages where they're constantly thinking about what are my opponents out? What can they do to come back from this position? And then they're just routing out those options, preemptively shutting down all of those uh, possibilities. And if Daichi leaves open a window or a play, some sort of combination for James to take advantage of, then we could see the game really explode. But as we head into the second game, we've got a mulligan from James. So that's going to be one more card for Daichi. Yeah, big advantage to James going first going to be able to at least get some abilities into play, utilize Shady Dealings on the Drizzile at minimum, and get access to that play. Prize cards, again, pretty relevant to see what's access. Does have a Jolteon in the prizes, as, as well as a few Marnie and a boss's orders, but as long as the combo can exist in the deck, there's hope for Daichi. Right. With the Jolteon still available, with no Marnies, a little bit less of a chance to get that emergency lockdown to buy some time. We've seen these Arceus Flying Pikachu decks do before. And also, big shout out to the Golden Path to the Peak. If you uh, haven't gotten your copy yet, viewers, make sure you use that code WORLDS22LONDON to uh, get your copy of Golden Path to the Peak. If this isn't a display of how powerful that card is, having two representatives in top four, then I don't know what is at that point. No more, actually, three representatives. Yeah. That's something to note. Three out of the four players in top four at Worlds are all playing Path to the Peak in their deck. Oh, wow, these are... Radiant uh, four, Greninja, five, no. six Pokemon. Six what? Six Pokemon in the prizes. You're going to have so many different cards and ways to search them out. And James is going to know what's happening as soon as that first quick ball hits. That, the that, battle VIP pass, but the VIPs are MIA. Has two VIP pass, but that would be a sight to play a Hisuian ball and look and say, oh, what, what did I choose here? <laughs> yeah, you have overwhelming <laughs> options, but. The deck can still function without those Pokemon, but man, does that hurt to have a little access. But you're going to be able to search out the few Pokemon that you do have in the deck. Double battle VIP pass, not needing to dig through the deck at all. And yeah, James is going to get the unfortunate news of, yeah, oh, my, my, deck seems, uh, my deck seems a little hollow at this point. But at the very least, we can get Origin Form Palkia, maybe try to get an attacker. Um, with the Sobble in the active, we have access to potentially Drizzile to get that heavy ball, to get the, net, the Radiant Greninja, you know, to jailbreak him out of the prize cards and get that into play. Yeah, the Radiant Greninja is the biggest piece that's mm -hmm. prized. However, Hisuian Ball is still available. It just is unfortunate that you usually are playing Hisuian Ball and grabbing the only option, or maybe you have one other. You really want a lot of those Pokemon in your deck, specifically the Kerbomitable as well. I think it's smart that James identified that as a good card in this matchup that has usage and viability, especially if you can power it up as well. But Moonlight Shuriken, especially when you're going first, is the attack you want to be using on your second turn of the game. And it's going to be harder to get those energies into this card pile. Oh my god, it got the double that happen. battle VIP pass set up, mm -hmm. but the Radiant Greninja and the rest of the supporting cast are in the prizes. We can get a ton of Sobble set up, and at the very least, this opens up a line where enough shady dealings can come through before the energy, the uh, excuse me, the thunderous awakening and the memory capsule uh, shuts this off. It's only one Drizzile away from getting that heavy ball, getting that Pokemon, and getting this deck back 
e back on track. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, definitely a big to not have the Greninja on the first turn. Again, you want to discard water energies as soon as the first turn of the game. Has to actually commit it to the Sobble, and this is another way to discard them. You can just retreat off the Sobble. You know you're going to be using Greninja on the second okay. turn, and here we go. Daichi's going to be kicking things off. What will we see? And it all comes down to really what can get set up over on that side, and more so how James can respond. With the Arceus already set up, it's the classic. You've got the Arceus V. You just need to attach the energy to open up, you know, the double turbo option to have the Trinity Nova. And already discarding the Arceus V-Star off the quick ball, going to find an EV perhaps, going to find the flying Pikachu. But of course, looking through the deck first, figuring out there was nothing really too detrimental in the prizes, as you said, Ethan. So Daichi, the world is his oyster at this moment. Yeah, has a lot of options definitely to work with. Just looking through the deck, all these players at this point understand knowing what is available, a big key part of executing your strategy as best as possible, and understands that getting Flying Pikachu out already has an EV in hand, so it doesn't have to search that out at minimum. It's not really worth getting two down into play against this deck because if you're going to Moonlight Shuriken, you're going to take one out. You might as well take the other. But at the same time, though, it can be smart to get two out because your opponent can target the Pikachu down. So sometimes it is a little bit better to get both out because you provide your opponent with a choice at that point. Do you target down to the Pokemon that shut off your entire engine? Or do you really focus on the attacker? And that's the problem with this matchup. When you focus on one aspect, the other is just a whole other issue that you have to tackle additionally. This list pressures you in so many different ways. You can't counter everything perfectly. And Daichi already sets up with the flying Pikachu V. There's the EV as well, joining it. And now the setup is just being threatened. Memory capsule pre-attachment. We just got to see the Jolteon. Another, ooh. What do you think about this attachment here of the memory capsule? On yeah, the this is this is fine. You can utilize just Trinity. Keep it. You can utilize Trinity charge as well. It's not a bad play. More so if the Marnie was played, there's no way we see that to come down into play, but really looking for a double turbo energy. Do we see it on the first turn? We do not. So this is where the decision making comes mm. in. Do you commit to this flying Pikachu or do you put the energy on the Arceus to guarantee a Trinity Nova on the following turn? Not much else is happening in this hand either. Just a bunch of energy and Luminion V. And this is where uh, Daichi's got to make some decisions, but I'm sure has been in this spot before. Attaching to the bench knows it's going to be a little bit harder to target down this bench Pokemon as well. But at the same time, you know your opponent's most likely going to go for a Moonlight Shuriken and target down the Eevee and the Flying Pikachu this turn. It might just be better to attach to the active to have that opportunity. But again, Daichi's doing this for a reason. And the Luminion as well can grab a supporter out to make things possible for the following turn. Yeah, so there it is. Luminion grabs the Marnie. Going to have this in his uh, hand ready for the next turn. And James now sees this is a very short window of opportunity indeed to make something happen. With the three Sobbles set up, Daichi sees, I know that you just want to do triple Drizzile, a bunch of Shady Dealings, and if you don't immediately use those cards that you get from the Shady Dealings, they're going to go on the bottom of the deck. It's a big top deck, or rather not a big top deck, a big thing to not have at the start of the turn. Irida can grab the Hisuian Heavy Ball, however, the problem exists that there's no way to discard any cards. You see already the Capacious Bucket and the Heavy Ball being brought to the top of the deck, wants both of those cards, and it actually can be possible with Drizzile. The issue now is you're really going to be at an energy mm -hmm. disadvantage coming at the end of this turn. Your energy attachment for turn is just going to be put into the discard pile by retreating this Drizzile. It's really going to come down to how Daichi can respond, but James very clearly lining up this Moonlight Shirk in play. What he targets down, that's the real question. The Moonlit Shuriken can take out that one EV, but that's still only one piece of the puzzle as we've talked about. Now going into the prizes with the Asuian Heavy Ball, locating the missing VIPs from turn one, but Radiant Greninja is really the card that you're looking for. And yeah, that's a sight right there. <laughs> <laughs> Just looking at six Pokemon in the hand like, wow, uh, is this really happening to me in my pretty much do or die match in top four? But that's how Pokemon works. and. You mean you get the Greninja, it's a good feeling, but the rest of your prizes is just basics or ways to get basics out. Yeah, we've got the Origin Form Palkia V-Star in the hand, ready to use that star portal, power up this Radiant Greninja. Yep, this Pokemon will go back to the prizes, tucked away from competition Ooh, for now. Ball there at the bottom, maybe we can keep a chain going. Mm -hmm. Get yep. that Kerbomitable out in case you need that important attacker like you were talking about. Yeah, the big issue here is just getting rid of the Jolteon consistently, and it's going to be completely possible with help of Radiant Greninja. We do see the concealed cards come out. 
There's the retreat, already has the Polka V-Star attachment for turn. Star portal, V-Star power. Yeah, you got real question. Exactly, you get the energies into the discard first, put onto the Greninja, Moonlit Shuriken. Yeah, very EV smart. Flying Pikachu. Yeah, this is a very smart play. Uh, I mean, Daichi attached to the bench because the switch was already in and hand. The heavy ball comes back. Yep, so here we go. Big time, top deck, what is it? Another Eevee! That's a very solid way. Can get that down to play and utilize the second memory capsule onto it, rather. Oh, no, actually doesn't have the memory capsule because it was attached to the Arceus because yeah. it had to be discarded with the Professor's Research. So that means no more Jolteon, it looks like. Actually attaching another one. Are there multiple copies of this in the deck? Hold I on, there's three, wow! Ooh, I thought there was only two, but there Ooh. is three, so that's why Daichi just wanted to go ahead and get that into play now. Yeah, a lot of times you'll just see this as a standard 2-2 two, two, and 2 package, 2 EV, 2 Jolteon, and 2 Memory Capsule. But Daichi understands sometimes you got to discard these pieces. It's important to have multiple copies. Running 3 really emphasizing the fact that Jolteon is good against a lot of matchups. Going to see 5 cards, and more importantly, James's large hand is going to go to the bottom of the deck. Do we see an Arceus V-Star? And there it is. Starbirth is going to search some pieces out of the deck. That was the missing piece, Arceus V-Star. And as you said, Ethan, once you're in that dominant position, you play the Arceus V-Star, you use that Star Birth to solidify. This EV was placed down this turn, so we still have one more shot at James to maybe get this up into the active with a cross switcher to get that knockout to try to shut down the Jolteon. There is one ordinary rod in the deck for Daichi. Yeah, Daichi's got to make a choice at this point. Uh, it's really much, do you want to commit to evolving this flying Pikachu to give up some more prize cards? Or do you say, you know what? This Pikachu is a long lost cause. I'm going to set up a second flying Pikachu instead of the first one. Just pretty much say, hey, these mm -hmm. are two prizes for you. If you can gust it up, congratulations, you could take them. But I really prioritize another attacker. And you see that's what is benched right away. Retreat into the Arceus, the double turbo energy. And I'm almost certain that these energies accelerated off of Trinity Nova will go onto this fresh Pikachu V. We've focused so much on the Jolteon Memory Capsule, that thunderous awakening ability, because it is just so dominant once it gets put together. But we have to remember that that is just technically plan B. The origin of I want to counter Palkia was flying Pikachu V Max. And if you can just focus on that and have consistent access to that, you're going to be able to still put James in a terrible position. We have the acceleration now, thanks to the Trinity Nova. Three energies going over onto the flying Pikachu V. Yeah, and this is an important turning point. We saw how detrimental the Marnie was to Kaiwin in this game. So what are these cards that James has to work with? Has level ball and an evolution incense. Okay, so there'll be there's a there's the ability to make some plays. There's the access to evolve into the shady dealings in Teleon. Yes. I can grab some more pieces, and that most likely will be the grab right off the bat. You see Melanie already being brought to the front of the deck along with the scoop up net. Understands that having an energy advantage is going to be critical going into these turns where Jolteon may not be available, or could even prioritize trying to go after the Jolteon. And we see there's already a cross switcher in the hand for James, so that is more than available as an option. Right now, James has this crucial final turn to get as much shady dealings done as possible before that potential Jolteon evolution. I wonder if James is going to be able to make that hard choice. Do I try to spread my damage down elsewhere, start mapping my prizes? Am I going to be able to stay in this game if I allow this Jolteon to shut me down? If the Marnie comes through, it doesn't matter if I have these leftover pieces to try to prepare for next turn. And that's the other angle that Daichi list is attacking James right now. Looks like found a capacious bucket, a choice belt, and one other card off of that. Melanie, the question is, what are you going to utilize the second Shady Dealings ability? Almost certainly going to see that Inteleon get scoop up net into the hand. Mm -hmm. And then, do yeah, then can both evolve. Yep. Just trying to find those cards and try to make use of those cards. It's not just about, I want to prepare for my next turn. Because of that threat of Marnie, you have to make sure you get things you're using now, or you have to find the combination to take down this EV and prevent the Jolteon altogether. And once that threat is down, that's only one part of making your way towards victory. We still have the flying Pikachu V with the energies attached. We have a second one with a little bit of damage on the bench, but still a beautiful lightning attacker and the Arceus as well. It choose to split the energies. We were watching a game yesterday where uh, Daichi splitting the game, splitting energies actually cost him a few turns uh, playing up against Palkia. 
Uh, we'll see if it happens again. It's definitely something to note. Uh, splitting the energy is a little bit more defensive, but mm -hmm. at this point, it's how it works. However, Shady Dealings grabbing the cross switcher. I think you're right, Adam. I think he wants to go after this EV. Understands that Thunderous Awakening is going to slow down the entire strategy at minimum if that gets established at any point during the game for one full turn. Even if you're going to go for the knockout on that turn, you're not going to have access to Pokemon, or rather, Water Pokemon's abilities. Yeah, the star, the star portal was already used. Radiant Greninja Ooh. is out of the running, but whoa. Yeah, this is an interesting line to bring this up. So very smart of Daichi to split the energies onto this flying Pikachu. However, the prizes line up very well for James. He's going to go after this flying Pikachu V, and that's going to put exactly three prize cards if Daichi wants to respond KO this active Palkia, it's going to be in range to be knocked out by a subspace swell. However, setting subspace swell up, already down a Melanie, and staring down the potential to be ability locked for the rest of the game, that's a scary risk. James is saying, hey, I'm in top four. I'm already down a game. This is already a rough matchup. It's a risk I'm willing to take to try to get myself to the finals of the World Championships. Even if the Jolteon is preempted, even if you have access to the Shady Dealings, the Marnie is always there to put those key cards right back onto the bottom of the deck. So James is going to opt for a very audacious line of getting the Origin Form Palkia V-Star into the active and just start swinging away. This is what it's going to come down to. Even just hitting into this Palkia is not bad. So there's a lot of options to really consider. We are going to see the Quick Ball get rid of Evolution Incense. And this is just James thinning the deck out as much as possible. Understands, hey, I'm not going to have access to these abilities. I'm not going to have the ability to do much else. Zigzagoon utilizing that Headbutt Tantrum ability. Going to place one damage counter on that Arceus V-Star on the bench. These are the next, these next couple of turns are going to make, or rather decide the outcome of this match. Will we have Daichi advancing into the finals of the World Championships, or will James force a game three and really put the pressure on in an intense situation? A lot of two prize Pokemon here on the bench with a little bit of damage on them. We've got Origin Form Palkia V-Star taking the knockout on Flying Pikachu V, thanks to that choice belt. Now two more prizes taken. And over to Daichi, the second flying Pikachu is now promoted into the active. So now we're missing out on that VMAX Lightning Attacker. We don't have the Jolteon. Here comes the Marnie trying to once again undo all the work that that Shady Dealings did in the last turn. Having that Marnie is big. That's going to go ahead and reset James's hand. Daichi is looking for a Jolteon. If there's a Jolteon, all of James's consistency shut down. Do we see it? And there's the Ultra Ball. The Ultra Ball can find the Jolteon to shut off the abilities. Even has the Ordinary Rod to bring one back. We know there's only one unavailable in the prize card. So here we are. We are going to see Jolteon come out into play big time here. There also is the decision. The hand is looking pretty weak besides this to grab Crobat and attempt to try that out instead. But it's it kind of has a plus or negative. You take the risk of not finding Jolteon and then throwing the game away, but you also have the advantage that if you do find it in combination with other supporter cards, you have a better chance if something like the Arceus gets knocked out. On the other hand, you get Jolteon, you secure yourself the ability lock, but you really don't have much other follow-up besides maybe a couple turns down the line of getting some prize cards and being able to work in some more cards from your top decks. So here comes the Ordinary Rod. Those cards were already prepped from the discard pile, just gonna go right back into the deck. And here's the Ultra Ball to find that piece that was just put into the list. Gonna go for this Jolteon, and now there's the lockdown. We had the Marnie to put James onto a four card hand, and now locking out the Shady Dealings means it's gonna be so hard for James to yeah. pivot and find a way to fix this. And you see him considering that, because he knows the rest of the hand is unplayable at this point, so he's gonna actually risk it and go for the Crobat. Wow. This is really Daichi saying, I need to find more than just the Jolteon to keep myself in the game. This shows the power that James's deck has when it has access to abilities and, and has this, access to these turns before getting ability locked. And this shows that James's Gambit is actually paying big off six because cards. you have this big threat in the active. It's forcing, it's forcing Daichi to respond. He missed the Jolteon. No wow. Jolteon either. You miss out on that opportunity so James can now jump back into the game with Shady Dealings and still has the Palkia in the active. It's a big time miss. There's no Jolteon. Can retreat into this Arceus. 
There's no way for James to win the game on this turn. However, the opening is now there to try and target down one of these bench Pokemon, such as the Eevee. We'll see what James has access to. Already down a few amounts uh, of Cross Switcher, it seems. Has access now to another energy attachment onto the benched Palkia. This is going to be a big tempo swing because it means James will have time to prepare this Pokemon up. Already see the energy in hand. And it's just going to be considering just abandoning this strategy of attacking with Flying Pikachu in this matchup and saying, am I going to go with something else? But still going to commit one energy onto it. And what is the top deck for turn? It's an Irida. That's a big find. Has Evolution Incense as well. Water Pokemon abilities are still in play. And this is going to open up a lot of lines for James here. Evolution Incense plus Irida it has access to the Shady Dealings is going to explode back into this game. The Marnie's not going to shut down this engine. You need it in combination with Path to the Peak. You need it in combination with the Thunderous Awakening ability to keep your opponent locked down. James is clawing back valiantly, keeping the threat levels up, has another Origin Form Palkia V-Star on the bench, ready to get set up to keep this chain of attackers going to try to carry us to a game number three, that small window of opportunity, that small chance that Palkia has in this matchup is taking full advantage of here to bring this to hopefully another miracle outcome. And that Melanie is extremely smart. It allows James to continue having tempo when it comes to energies for the rest of the game going forward. And that is important because it also opens up Boss's Orders being a potential supporter card for choice as well down the line. Wants to just draw some more cards, considering what else to yep, play for the scoop turn. Up net, yep, brings scoop that up back, net. rebench the Sobble. Tons of recycling on the Shady Dealings, and James is just trying to calculate now several turns ahead. You can't rely on the cards that you get to be there, but you still have to make those decisions and those choices. Whether or not your opponent has the Marnie is the big thing. You're constantly needing plans within plans within plans in order to keep up with how many ways Daichi's trying to counter this Palkia strategy. This is looking good for James. Has almost the knockout, has the knockout lined up on this Arceus, dealing enough damage, 290 because of the choice belt. So all that's needed is one more prize card. And it's gonna be very possible. Marnie can disrupt the hand, but besides that, there's not many other options. I think just considering, do I want to play down this, or what do I want to grab off the Shady Dealings? Is actually gonna go ahead and grab the Tool Jammer. That card seems fine. I think James just is thinking about cards that can be put into play that can be discarded so that the good cards that are a lot of live outs for James uh, come a Jolteon lock or non-Jolteon lock mm -hmm. are gonna be playable and allow him to close out this last thing. The problem that comes now with Jolteon lock the following turn is this deck is very easy access to grab the gusting effects because of double cross switcher and boss's orders, but that's only when it has access to the Inteleon line. Exactly. That all changes when it's shut off. I think that's what James is worried about. You're really close, you're looking really good. You've almost got a backup Palkia powered up as well, but if you don't have a way to bring up a Pokemon on the bench, things are looking pretty sketchy. Daichi's in a very awkward position. There's a lot of juicy two prize Pokemon on the bench. They can be brought up and taken down. And it's just the fact that you need the Jolteon to lock it out. You need to be able to stop James from just reaching onto your bench and taking down these okay. easy targets. Yeah, and I don't know if that was a, a, something regarding pace of play or something, but we're, we're progressing on through. I think the, the real decision is just thinking about what is grabbed off of this Shady Dealings Drizzile. It's going to be the scoop up net. A play seems fine. You're going to have it for next turn. What is the hand looking like as well? Yeah, Passes James is going back in. He's saying, wait, don't cut just yet. Has a double cross switcher as well. And there's the Shady Dealings Inteleon. Oh, boy. Echoing horn. There it is. Boss's orders lined up here, trying to keep that threat potential up, finding another very easy target. James with three prizes left means that you can very easily just bring this Crobat or Luminion right back and then knock it out again. Yeah, you usually don't want to grab these pieces if you know that Marnie is a very good play. But uh, actually, wow, going to go double cross switcher out after the Palkia. Bring up this benched Palkia that has no damage on it. 
and pretty much say, hey, I'm going to double cross switcher this There's up. There's scoop up net. Oh, Zig wow. Zagoon getting recycled. Another headbutt tantrum to soften up the other Arceus. Yeah, this is smart because he grabbed the boss's orders. So Daichi cannot disrupt the hand and gust the Pokemon up in the same turn. And that's why James is going for this play. One um, prize left. Yep, take One two more prizes. chance to take this to game number three. The players here in top four of the World Championships are fighting with their all to advance in this bracket. Yeah, the lines were actually surprisingly closing for Daichi. And uh, yeah, that's it. We're going to go to game three. Game three is locked in. This is the only time you're going to see a matchup that has been demonstrated over and over again to be so difficult, to be so potentially one-sided. And these Palkia players have trained against the best of the best and have practiced are finding these lines, are adapting their strategies on the fly here in real time to take us to a third game. Now James has to get one more shot at Daichi whiffing on that early setup, the early threat of the Eevee with the prize cards being shuffled one more time. It means that James also has another shot at an explosive double VIP pass opening, getting set up with the Radiant Greninja. We know what this Palkia deck can do when the cards line up on the first turn, and it has to come in now for James to advance. Meanwhile, Daichi's just chilling. You've still got a full game, another chance you know your list is favored. The cards just need to fall just a little bit better, just a smidge better, and you're just going to immediately run away with the game. So this is incredibly volatile at this stage, Ethan. Yeah, on paper, Daichi's favored. Mm -hmm. He's going to be able to go first, has the potential to set up the Jolteon Lock, and we saw that in game one. If everything there happens, there is not much James can do. It's really going to come down. I think this game is just going to come down to, can Daichi get the hand set up to get Jolteon locked out. Doesn't even in case need to Trinity Nova. Turn to Jolteon. That is the key to this matchup. Cannot stress it enough. His opening hand's gonna decide if there's no playable cards, even on James's side either. This is gonna be big opening hand, so that's what I'm gonna be looking into as we get into this Game 3 Masters Top 4. This is our first Top 4 match in over three years here at the World Championships. What does the hand look like? Does have access to Arceus and it looks Another like something else. Mulligan. And a Mulligan as well. That's going to make it even easier to get set up on this first turn. What are the prize cards? Looking for key pieces. Two double turbo energy in the prizes. That's, that's unfortunate, but it's no Jolteon pieces. And James, yeah. you're just you're just like, can I get a basic Pokemon? Can I get set up? The more cards I get my opponent, the more they get to play Solitaire at a better advantage. In the second game, we saw the same situation with James. Had a mulligan at the beginning. Daichi started with an extra card. Fortunately, it didn't matter. With two double turbo energies in the prizes, Daichi might be one turn behind on getting a Trinity Nova or a Trinity Charge to accelerate a flying Pikachu. James now still has one more shot here, trying to find a basic okay. Pokemon to start, That's trying good. to get the VIP pass. That's good. He found the Radiant Greninja. That's a key piece. The hand wasn't looking very good uh, unless a Palkia was prized. Let's take a look at these prize cards here for James. Water what is energies. in the prize cards? Not okay. too bad. He was literally looking for a basic Pokemon there because James does have a Hasuian Heavy Ball, so that could mm -hmm. grab an extra piece. This setup on James' this side may be very reliant on what happens. Here we go, starting things off. And that's big, whether it was off the Mulligan or if it was off the top deck for turn. Found the energy attachment, has the quick ball for Eevee. This is all you need to find turn one. Also has Ultra Ball for the following turn. So the cards are there in Daichi, Daichi's deck to get the turn to Jolteon. There's nothing that James can do. This deck is not playing anything like Barney to disrupt the hand. And that means that Daichi can feel confident saying, I've got the lock next turn. Let's see what you can do on your first turn of the game. At the very least, we know that the matchup is winnable for James. He's demonstrated that beautifully. But as we saw in the first game, Daichi only needs to do a bare minimum of setup to completely lock down the game. And with Arceus in the opening slot and the quick ball completing the rest of the setup, James has a very small window of opportunity indeed to get some sort of threat into play. Eevee is found off of the quick ball after the prizes were checked. James with the Raiding Greninja already in the opening hand can still respond, hopefully get that concealed cards, battle VIP pass, can keep that cascade of value and potential explosiveness ready to go. Eevee now onto the bench. And what will join it? Just a turn one attachment on the Arceus. Anything else? No, it doesn't seem to be there. 
No, not quite. Yeah, I think that's a I think that's a V Max in the hand, and that's going to be the pass. And again, that's all Daichi needs on turn one. It's just the Palky, or rather the Arceus down and the Eevee on the bench. What is the top deck? Has Capacious Bucket and Greninja, but no Battle VIP pass or Irida is going to be very reliant on these two cards off concealed cards to get either of those pieces, or at least a way to find a Palkia V at minimum. Mm -hmm. Drawing two cards, we've seen so many Palkia decks. We talk so much about the explosiveness, but it never seems to happen when you need it to happen the most. Um, now with the uh, concealed cards, the Capacious Bucket getting the energy, of course, we need to get those energies into the discard pile so you have that Threat of the Moonlight Shuriken. The Star Portal, we'll see if Daichi is going to be able to make the Jolteon and the Memory Capsule happen. Um, needs Arceus V-Star as well to get Starbirth to maybe fill in those missing pieces. But overall, James is still in the driver's seat. We know that Radiant Greninja can get down, can get online. And with two more cards, knowing how explosive this deck is on turn one, you know, there's going to be a lot of power in those last two top decks. These are big. This could make or break James's run here at the mm -hmm. World Championships. If there's no Palkia and Daichi just has the combination of cards to get a lockout with the Jolteon Thunderous Awakening, uh, that, that could just be it. So here we go. Two cards. What are these for James? Let's see. No. Cross Switcher and Melanie. No, can't even Melanie onto. There's no V Pokemon to Melanie onto. Has to rely off this Hisuian Heavy Ball, but James already searched the deck and knows there's no Palkia in the prize cards. This is going to be a turn one with no Palkia. The Heavy Ball comes through just to see if there's something else in the prizes to pivot to, but without the turn one Palkia set up, that's just such a massive loss step in terms of time and tempo and threat potential. If you don't get the Palkia down turn one, you don't have the threat of uh, V-Star to get the Star Portal to accelerate some energies and try to play for that aggressive opening that you need in this matchup. Yeah, that is just, you can tell, James is just heartbroken. There's the... the if you fall a half step behind, yeah, exactly. you're just, it opens you up to get locked down. We saw it before in uh, game two where Daichi was just a little bit behind and James was able to just force open a, a line of play to take that victory. But now Daichi is about to put a lid on game number three. Daichi's elated at this point to see no Paul get down. That makes us even more convincing, even more confidence going for him. Wow, this is... Oh, the whole storyline of this series of, mm -hmm. of hope being completely lost in the first game to James finding a way to claw back in game number two. And what's the top deck for turn? Does he already have yep. Boss Ultra Ball in hand? Top. We have Ultra Ball here to discard. Going to find the rest of the puzzle to get the lockdown set up. And James, without the Palkia, even if your abilities get turned on, as we saw in game number two, you can pivot this to so an big. aggressive stance, just trying to say, well, I have something that can attack. I'm just going to start trying to force my way through this game, but gets the Luminion, yep. finds a supporter, gets the Professor's Research, as we've seen time and time again from Daichi, throwing the hand away, getting that fresh seven, and completing the setup. And even though James made the miracle happen to bring it to a game three, we we know that this matchup is just too devastating if you don't also get an explosive high roll. We've seen some comebacks. Maybe if you're James, this is the time you put it out. Also has the Arceus V-Star in hand. That means that there just needs to be one of several pieces found off this Starbirth. Is there a double turbo energy? And there is a double turbo energy. So this V-Star power Starbirth can find the Jolteon and the Memory Capsule. There's also the Quick Ball to find the Flying Pikachu V. Things are running away. Daichi is running away with this game. He can taste victory. He can taste that ticket. He can see it in the distance, the end of the tunnel. That top two finals is so close. It's so close, it's within his grasp. Just has to reach out and take it. It's what's rightfully his. This is the matchup that he wanted, the matchup that was perfectly predicted, and this is what he wants to see at this stage of the finals. There's the Jolteon. There's the Memory Capsule. Thunderous Awakening. Now no water Pokemon have abilities. Sobble gets knocked out. This is going to trigger three energies out of the deck, accelerated onto another Pokemon from the Arceus, and now we've got this proper chain. We've We've seen time and time again. I can attack with Arceus. I have another attacker ready to go. And with no Palkia to attack, no concealed cards, no shady dealings, James is now circling the drain. This hand cannot be played. There, there is not a single card in this hand that will do anything. The, 
Uh, you can bench the Crabominable. I think there's a Melanie there. You can maybe Melanie onto the Crabominable. That's something at least, but uh, Taiji is actually sitting with a lot of cards in hand. There's the potential to, to make something happen with the Crabominable, but I mean, do you double cross switcher? What do you try to stall the Luminion up? I think that this if is, you're James, so devastating. you can all, only, the only thing you can say is, I know that I played to the best of my ability. I played one of the strongest decks in the format, the strongest deck, got all the way to this point, and you know that when you're confident in your play, you're confident in your practice, and you are executing day after day to make it to this point, the only thing that can really stand in your way is incredible bad luck or just an awful matchup. And I think that as long as you can be proud of what you did to get to this point, you can maybe be a little bit easier on yourself when you run into a deck like this. We will see the Melanie come down. We'll go ahead and get three cards and yeah, you can. I mean, you can evolve the Drizzile like you would normally evolve Pokemon up, but you're not going to get the the usage of that Shady Dealings ability. The whole point of why it's in this deck, and yeah, get Palkia out, get things, try to power them up, but you're not going to be able to find your energies consistently. This whole deck falls apart. You see this deck for what it is without Shady Dealings, and that's yep. really a, a testament to how powerful Shady Dealings is. Because when you take it away from this deck, it essentially is nothing. It is like attaching a, an energy every turn and pre preying off your top deck. Nothing gets done. Nothing happens, and that. That's what's happening here for James. Pure devastation. We're going to start to see the trigger avalanche potentially. Okay, milling the top two cards of the deck. Is it anything relevant? No, just two Pokemon that aren't going to be played down at any point in this matchup. Yeah, so with the Crabominable, we saw this in the first game. This is the Hail Mary, the final option that you have when you're locked down with Thunderous Awakening. But Daichi has the one of switch here, brings the Arceus V-Star right back into the active, has the evolution into the Flying Pikachu V-Max, just going to take the uh, 200 damage here onto the Crabominable V, get even more energy acceleration, can spread that around, put some onto the Jolteon. And that's so it, he could see! Wow, Daichi Shimada is going to the finals. Your first finalist here at the Pokemon World Championships. I cannot be more proud of this player. His time has come. He's prepared perfectly for this metagame and has been playing so clean, so quick, so calm and collected this entire time. Big smile on his face as he fills out the match slip. And again, big shout out to James, even though it is very devastating to make it this far and come up short. He still showed us that even at the worst of times when your back is against the wall, you can still make some magic happen. And to be here at the top four of the World Championships here in London is still a monumental achievement against some of the best players on the planet. Wow. It's, it's, it's crazy to think that after three years, we have finally crowned our first finalist. And you can see that he is overcome with emotion. The joy of making it to the finals at the World Championships. Congratulations to Daichi again, making it all this way with such a cool deck that Arceus Jolteon and James also going to walk away with a huge accomplishment on the resume. Top four at the World Championships. You could see on his face he wanted more. He wanted to take this tournament down. But sometimes the cards play out, the matchups play out. Avoided that deck for a while throughout the tournament. But it finally came back to bite him. Showed up against him in top four. And will be taken down by it, ending up at top four placement. Yeah, I know that James was very disappointed. But uh, as you said, Ethan, it's still an honor to make it this far. It's an honor to even just be here on the desk to witness such a fantastic game. When you go up against a deck like that, that has such an awful matchup, you think it might be a quick 2-0. But the players are just playing their hearts out. They're scraping the bottom of the barrel for every possible chance and opportunity to even take it to a game three and really show us what they're made of as players. I know that each and every competitor here is hungry and James is going to be back at the next competitive event even more prepared and even stronger. And now there's the potential for a mirror match in finals. We have not seen a mirror match at the finals of the World Championships. I'm not even going to take a guess because it, it, yeah. it has been a while. We've seen the, the 2014 we saw Verizzi and Genesect mirror match, but it wasn't a same 60 card mirror match or really mm -hmm. that close. There were some differences. It's been a long time since it's come and 
Wow, it's it just, we've already progressed so far. We've been on a journey throughout this tournament. We started at day one, watch players grind through the day one qualifier to make it into the second day of competition. And then we went or to the second day of competition as well, where these players that were invited from their respective regions and those who made it through day one battled it out to make top cut. And those who did had to battle it out again today. There have been so many intense matches played. I'm glad that I've been here to witness it, see all of the exciting action that's been happening.